Happy New Year's everybody. Today we are going to be making a beef rib roast for dinner. This is a four ribber. This will serve about eight people generously. Um, we're only four, but we like leftovers and steak sandwiches and stuff like that. This roast I bought about a week and a half ago. I left all the fat on it and um, didn't trim any bone or meat off of it. I left it just as it was and it weighed 13 and a half pounds. And the reason I dry age it is so that it intensifies in flavor. Um, it, you know, if, if you've ever had it at a steakhouse um, aged beef, you know what I mean. So this weighed 13 and a half pounds. It lost about a pound and a quarter just of water weight. Just drying out, it lost a pound and a quarter um, of water. Then I trimmed two and a quarter pounds of fat and dried up meat off of it. Um, if you have a dog, you can feed it to your dog or chickens or pigs, whatever. My dog is allergic to beef, so I can't give it to her. Sorry, little Kia. Anyways, um... So this will just be going to waste. Maybe I might cut up the fat for the birds and see if they'll eat it. So what I've done already is trim it up um, and I've seasoned it. I put a little bit of olive oil on it, some salt and pepper and a little bit of garlic powder. Really simple. Some people like to inject things. Um, the more holes you make in your meat, the worse it is. Um, so I've got one hole in it right now, and that's for the probe thermometer. I highly recommend picking one of these up. This cost maybe $15 at Kohl's. It's a Food Network brand. It's got a timer, um, start and stop. You can set it by hours. You could set it to go off uh, at a certain temperature. I've got it set to go off at about 120. Looks like I need new batteries. I'll have to do that soon. Anyways, right now the thermometer is reading 36 degrees. I'm not going to put this in the oven until it's about 40. Um, it'll help keep it moist um, if it's warmer when it starts cooking. I'm cooking this, I'm starting to, I'm going to cook it at 300 degrees, uh, maybe 325. It's going to be a very slow method. And what this does is allows the meat to cook all the way through without overcooking the outside. If you've ever cut into a beef roast and it's like brown on the outside and then moo red in the, in, in the inside, raw, that's what I'm avoiding. Um, so when I cut into this, it's gonna be a perfect pink on the whole surface and just a tiny little ring of brown on the outside. So it's gonna take several hours. That's what's great about the thermometer. We've got no set time. Once you do this a few times, you'll know how long it takes, but um, I don't like to put any, um, I don't like to rush it. So what I've got it set for 120, uh, the end temperature will be 140. That's rare. So I have got it set for 120. At that point, I'll take it out, cover it, put my t oven up higher to maybe 400, 450, and that'll allow it to get some color. I'm gonna put it back in and then I'm gonna take it out about 130, maybe 135, and then, then let it rest, it's done. Cover it, leave the thermometer in, it'll go up to 140, um, naturally beef, any roast, the temperature will rise ten, about 10 degrees uh, once you take it out of the oven. So before I seasoned it, this is what it looked like dry aged. It was dark and crusty looking and then I trimmed all that fat off and all that dry meat and look at that marbling. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous meat and it's going to be very delicious. But uh, you lose a lot in the trimming and drying. Okay, so I want to talk about dry aging. All fresh beef out there is aged um, some time to allow enzymes to nat that are naturally present in the beef to break down muscle tissue. Um, 
what we get in the store that I work in, you know, all our meats are cryovac and pri primals. And that's another um, way of aging beef. It's called wet aging and it's done in that shrink wrap. And dry aged beef, as you know, is very expensive. If you've ever seen it in a market or at a steakhouse, um, because you lo it loses weight and that costs money, that making it more expensive. Um, so dry aging allows dehydration in order to concentrate the flavor. So I've dry aged this for about 10 days. You could do it three days up to seven days. You could do it 10 days like me. Um, and then before dry aging, you want to make sure there's a good layer of fat on there because when it's done, you want to trim that fat off. So that's another cost factor. Um, when you buy dry aged beef, they trim all that dry meat off of the outside as well as the fat. Hi everybody. Um, I just want to talk uh, about a couple things. First, let's talk about the grades of beef. Um, again, my company that I work for sells only choice. Once in a while we get in select and or prime, depending on the area. So grades of beef. The three main grades are select, choice, and prime. Select, um, like I said, we don't really carry, and it goes up from there in price. Um, a grade is a composite evaluation of factors that affect pal palatability of meat, like tenderness, juiciness, and flavor. But what it boils down to is fat and marbling. So choice is in the middle. It has just enough fat and marbling to make it tender, juicy, and flavorful. If you um, don't have a lot of marbling in that meat, the flavor, that's where you get your flavor from, from that fat and that marbling. So you wanna look at, uh, look for a pretty good marbling like this, if you can see that at all. All right, guys, um, the temperature is hovering between 39 and 40 degrees, and it's just about time to put it into the oven. Again, this oven is 300 degrees. I've got it set for 300 degrees. Just gonna make sure that the, um, the cord is free from getting tangled on anything. All right, so I've got it so that the rack is in the middle of the oven um, so it's got nice even airflow and I'm just going to take the cord and make sure that it's um, not going to get caught up on anything so again I've got it set for 120 all right when it reaches 120 I'm going to take it out cover it Turn the oven up to about 400 degrees, maybe 450 to get some color on it. All right, so it's 120 degrees. I'm gonna take it out and take a look at it. Come on. All right. Looks good. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's 120 degrees. I'm gonna readjust it. So I'm gonna turn the oven temp up. I'm gonna tent this with some foil. All right, we're gonna let it rest until the um, oven gets up to temperature. I'm gonna put it up to about 400, give it some color, and then we're gonna take it out again at 130. Okay, the oven is hot. I'm gonna put this back in. 
and um, before I said I'm going to take it out at 130, I'm actually going to take it out at 135 because I want it to be 145. That's my goal. So now it's a little higher heat. Let me get this one out of the way. And again, it's set for 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now it's 128. All right, so the timer went off. It's reached 135. I've taken it out of the oven. I've shut the oven off. Um, I accidentally recorded myself cleaning up and not uh, taking it out of the oven. So if you can see that, I've got it set now for 145. That's my ultimate goal. And it's at 136. So it's already went up one degree since I've taken it out. It should go up a total of 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And now we just wait and we watch. All right, guys. This bad boy is ready. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this rack of ribs off. I'm going to keep my knife right on the bone. I'm follow the bone down. And the roast, I let it kind of cool down. It actually went up to 146. this bone off before and then tied it back on so that when it was done it was just a matter of cutting the strings but I don't know I just didn't feel like doing that if you buy it you could have a butcher do it for you if you don't have any out oh, twine at home this is really yummy, yummy, yummy. I'm gonna just put that in there for now. And I'm gonna cut into this so you can see just how beautiful it is. I think I'll start on this side. Can you get me a um, dish? First slice. I don't know if you can appreciate that color, but it is a perfect pink inside. Thank Here's you. your dish. Thank you. That was annoying. You could put, put it on there. Okay. I'm just going to take four slices off for now. And if anyone wants any more, they're more than welcome. I 
All right, so that's how we roast to roast beef. Thanks for watching. Okay, while my beef roast is roasting, I decided to make a dip for later on uh, for New Year's. So I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ingredients, and um, not really seven layers, but I've got a can of chicken breast, 10 ounces. I mix with just a little bit of red hot and then I flattened it out into this um, pan. Then I'm gonna take about maybe half a cup or so of rinsed uh, black beans, Goya black beans, rinsed and drained. And I'm just gonna sprinkle those. I may not even use this much because not everybody likes beans, but it's good luck to have beans on New Year's. I don't know where I heard that. Maybe it's black eyed peas. Then I'm going to do a layer of salsa. Let me get a spoon. Layer of salsa. Probably use most of this. I like to use um, mango peach salsa. It's our favorite. It's kind of a chicken taco buffalo chicken. Okay. That'll do for that. Then I've taken um, an eight ounce of cream cheese and I softened it all morning, and I mixed it with about half of this 16 ounce uh, container of sour cream, and it's still a little bit lumpy. I kind of whisk, whisked it together, but it's not too bad. You won't even notice that it's lumpy. So I'm gonna take that, and then I'm gonna layer it on top of the salsa. Okay, and I'm gonna get some, I don't like to use taco seasoning because there's too many preservatives, but I want just a little bit of taco flavor to go with this. And this is a cold dip, I'm not baking it. We're gonna eat it just as it is. this is the end result somehow I lost video of me putting the cheddar cheese and chives on top so it's served with tortilla chips and celery which uh, everyone left in the kitchen because they don't like it but everybody loves it happy new year